Welcome. Today we are going to talk about this book. Sure, by Alex Sujum Kim Pang. It's a long name. Um, I'm just calling him Alex, I think, probably, throughout the book. This is about, this is a follow-up to his book, Rest, which I reviewed uh, quite a while ago now. Um, it is about how to implement more rest, more time for yourself in a business. Mainly talking about a four-day work week in a lot of ways. So, buckle up, let's dig in. So the book sure opens up with this quote. I'll read it off my notes here. We live in a world in which business operates 24-7 and the global economy never stops. And competition is relentless. And even if you can become productive enough to finish early, customers and bosses still expect you to be available at all hours. It's funny, I was just kind of basically reading the same similar sentiment in uh, Jenny O'Donnell's uh, How to Do Nothing, which is... Just like that. That's a slipcover anyway. I'll be talking more about this book uh, at some point in the future. But that's how Alex Pang really opens up his book. Um, and it's all about, this book is really all about the benefits of taking time for yourself. Shorter, uh, that's what rest was about. And shorter is the manual to implement this for your business. One of the big arguments throughout the book is that typically any worker productivity, any benefits of that accrues to the business owner. So if you get more done, the business owner makes more. You don't necessarily make more with your salary or anything like that. The business owner, right? If you, you know, get more work done in your hour, you don't get extra pay. The business owner gets all that benefit. And shorter is a, it's an attempt um, to come up with a way so that workers get some of the benefit of their increased productivity. Basically saying, if you can do the same amount of work in four days that you did in five, then you get productivity. Which really seems great in so many ways because four days is excellent, right? Uh, there's a study in here where they talk about um, after eight hours of work in a week, basically you have all the happiness you need from work. And Which brought me wonder, like, why do we work more than eight hours? And I suppose we work more than eight hours just to earn some more money. But ultimately, why do you work more than eight hours? It's not like you're double happy if you, you know, if you're working 20 hours, you don't double happy by working 40. So why do you work that much? Why do we work that much? Uh, Jenny O'Donnell's already made me question, like, why do we, why does every unit of time have to be productivity? Why can't it just be time? Um, which is interesting. We'll get to that one later, but it certainly informs some of the same things here. Um, now, some of the worker, and he, he also uh, really likes Roe, uh, results only work environment, which again, Jenny O'Donnell just read this this morning. Jenny O'Donnell talks about that being like environment, uh, taking it to like anywhere. Anywhere it can be your work environment, then it could be home, it could be on your phone, it could be anything like that. And that, that is a way, saying row is, could be a strong way to like make all of your time productive and for work instead of you know having your own time to do your own thing. Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, I should have to look it up and I'll cut the facts on this later when I look at her book more. Um, but there was uh, a movement uh, in the 60s, 70s, we'll say. Um, and it was like eight hours for work, eight hours for sleep, and eight hours for me, for my time. Um, which we've gone away from in lots of ways. Like we, there's a lot of like, hey, work 90 hours, and that's the thing to do. So, and, that, and that's really trying to say, don't do this, right? Uh, it's trying to say, give us like your good eight hours of the day and do it focused and change how you do it. That's another big thing in here. And shorter, change how you do the eight hours. So no distractions, just do your work, right? You have... Um, Something like I would call the mullet method, where you focus really hard in the morning, uh, no distractions, nothing comes in, and then maybe in the afternoon you have some meetings. But all, again, all your meetings need to change too, right? They need to be shorter, they need to be compact, they need to be on point, they need to just get something done. You need to come in to make a decision, make the decision, and get back out and get back to work. That's what a lot of shorter is talking about, having a shorter work week by being more I don't know if productive is the right word, effective, efficient um, in your time, and then letting that effective and efficiency accrue to the workers because they get the time in their day. There's a lot of good things in there, right? So uh, in All In, um, I forget who wrote that now, um, but All In is a book about dads and how dads are all in, but they pay a lot of penalties for being good dads. Um, it lets parents be parents. It lets you schedule your appointments um, outside of work, right, on a Friday. Uh, Friday is a typical day that people take off in this book. Um, it lets you schedule your appointments on that day, be a good parent, and reduces some of the penalty that people pay, women and men both pay, for being good parents uh, as far as not seeming committed at work. 
These are all good, good things. But I know we've seen like huge productivity increases since uh, what is it, the 60s or 70s, like twofold. We're doing like twice as much like good productive, have good productive work coming out of what we do. And yet we're only now saying, now you got like twice as much as you used to be doing. And, you know, we're making less, uh, less per hour really uh, adjusted. And we, you know, US, there's just less benefits all around for everyone. Um, uh, less so in Canada, because, you know, I have healthcare, but. Um, as we see all this, now we're saying, hey, now that you've got double, now let's start looking at what we can let accrue to you, which seems tough, right? Uh, Jenny O'Dell talks in her book about, again, our RO um, environment coming and how it just felt like, oh, look, it's all about results now and everyone's striving for results and getting better results than everyone else. So now we're in like competition again to do more and have less time for ourselves. So that's kind of a counterpoint to Shorter, at least in the beginning of her book uh, so far. So for employers, uh, Pang says that most of the the fears for employers is that employees will start to see this um, four day work week as a right, not as a privilege for getting the same amount of work done. And I get it, um, right? When you give a perk to employees and then take it away because of whatever reason, employees get upset about it. So I get that. Um, I also see like, hey, you can do this if you do the same amount of work in less time. So if you do more and then employees get are afraid that if for some reason they don't, if it doesn't happen, that all this extra productivity they're supposed to apply into five days still. So, you know, they did their four and f- four days of five days of work in four, and then they say, okay, we're actually not going to do this. So I expect you to do basically six days of work in five now. Um, that's the fear that they have. And there's a lot of tension in there around what, around where the benefits accrue really, and around how much work you're going to be doing and what your employer expects out of you. As you can hear now, my kids are up because they're stumping upstairs. One of the big benefits that researchers found with a four-day work week was that there's less sick days, that people are overall happier with their work, that they are more rested um, for work, that they're just better, right? Like, how do you feel after a three-day weekend? And in fact, here's a great example. Most three-day weekends, you like, ah, oh, I got a three-day weekend, and you get, get a full week uh, of work done in four days. So what Pang is saying, we just need to do that all the time and let employees have a three-day week all the time, right? It's also used as a recruiting tool in lots of places. Restaurants are using it as a recruiting tool, like we're only working four days a week. You get all this other time off to go do something else, right? And even chasing out, um, because lots of restaurants are like 80, 90 hour weeks, and it's just hard for anyone to come to a lower, like a 40 hour week restaurant and say like, and actually stick to it. Um, But it was a recruiting tool. People wanted to work there because of the balance. People, um, that's probably a better perk than having a foosball table, which just, or, you know, whatever else, beanbag chairs. Because people are just saying, hey, this is like supposed to be my life now. And I don't really want work to be my life. I've got kids that want me to hang out with them. I want to run. I want to do stuff like that. So viewing the 40 work week as a perk is a really good thing for employers as, as a recruiting tool, right? And where you have people coming like, Not just for that, but as like an extra thing. You don't want to have people that come just for the four-day work week. You want them to come because they they want to be there, and that's like an extra thing. Oh, I you know, here's two good companies, but this one has a four-day work week. Well, let's go there instead, right? Let's go work at this one that values my time or lets me uh, keep some of the benefits of my productivity more than other ones. And that's, I guess, that's really it. That's all I want to say about shorter. Um, Should you read it? I think that it's a pretty good book. I think that. Peng is really trying to answer how do we let employees have the benefits of their productivity? How do we try to reckon this this imbalance that we continue to see? Um, we're seeing it a lot now as, you know, we're in the midst of COVID. It's uh, April 16th, right? We're in the midst of this and we're seeing like, now uh, Amazon's been dumb, right? Jeff Bezos is like super rich and saying, hey, can you donate to help people be able to take time off and like just, or sick people, you can donate your sick time to help employees take time off. Like, really, like, you could afford to pay all your employees no matter what, and it would be fine. But he's not going to do that. Um, So it's a way of letting, like, these productive workers in any field, uh, mostly in knowledge work he focuses on, but a bit in restaurants, uh, a bit in a few other fields, um, keep some of their productivity for themselves so that they can have better lives, really. That's what it's about. And it addresses the fears on both sides, on employee side and employer side. And overall, I think it's a pretty decent book. I don't know that it's the answer to this, though. I think that it neglects to take into account, and and maybe rightly so, um, that 
like employees have doing so much more than they ever used to do and providing so much more productivity to the bosses, to the owners of companies. And they're saying now that you, you know, say now that you've doubled everything, now you get to keep a little bit um, as opposed to saying, actually, you've been doubling it for a long time. Why don't we just let you keep it now? Um, but again, the employers have to stay competitive in a market as well. So I guess an interesting problem to tackle, um, an interesting uh, capitalist problem to tackle, like how much how much do we focus on productivity and how much do we focus on uh, living a life that's worthwhile, which are sometimes at odds, right? Let me think a little bit of uh, Mad Men. I did not watch the whole thing, but there seemed to be a lot more leisure in that um, where they would you know, take a long lunch, have a lot more slow time, um, whereas now you're expected, every lunch is a power lunch, right? It was the odd lunch that was a power lunch. Now every lunch is a power lunch, All right? Um, Jenny O'Dell talks about Fiverr as well, showing like, hey, you're answering a call during sex in some commercial. I've never actually seen it, so I can't verify this, but that is or does seem to be the sentiments a lot, like you're working all the time with everything uh, and you're never, never getting a rest. And Shorter wants to help you get that rest and help businesses let employees get that rest so that they can be good employees and good people. Uh, good people, I think he'd say, but I think that the book goes to more good employees. So they are rested to come back and do more productive stuff for you at work. Yeah. So if you like this video, you can give me a thumbs up. If you loved it, you can subscribe. I guess hit the bell, um, but make sure notifications are off on your device because you don't actually want your device to like bing and bug you when I put out a new video. But YouTube will only let you know that I put out new videos if you hit the bell. And if you want to support the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale uh, and support me there. Help me keep getting book reviews out, iPad tech content out, and just everything out. Have a wonderful day.